Hello, my name is David Italiano, and I'm a student and a FreeBSD developer. I was mainly involved um, in the performance monitoring tools, uh, porting these capabilities to the Sandy Bridge architecture. But this summer, I'm going to work on some improvements on the callout interface within the FreeBSD kernel. So that's easier an overview of my talk. Before some introduction, how historically this interface is, was maintained within the kernel, how now this is maintained, what are the problem and what can be improvement, some solution I tried to design, and uh, what are the main drawbacks of it. So this is expected uh, as a um, talk to get some feedbacks because my work is still in an early stage. I just finished the design phase and I'm going to implement it. So uh, computerized uh, uh, activities are often driven by counters. For example, if you have your screen that uh, it's switched off after some time you don't touch your keyboard, probably is, this is because your kernel maintain a timer to notice how much time has elapsed since you have done last activity. So in FreeBSD, the timers are provided via the callout facility. Uh, and um, for sure, uh, in, it, in order to maintain the outstanding timeouts, uh, the outstanding callouts, you have to store them in some kind of data structure. And the type of the data structure is really important for the performances you will obtain on the subsystem. So uh, when FreeBSD run on single core, the callout were maintained as a single linked list. And uh, we had two routines, which are hard clock and soft clock. So every time the uh, ti real timer in fires, hard clock is called, and uh, it uh, uh, do some operations on uh, the list. So basically, uh, every callout was maintained just as uh, um, a, struct, a struct in C language, which has some fields. Uh, the fields are the time at which you want to call the function, the function itself, and some arguments. So basically, as you can see, the callout uh, are just uh, a way to call some function at later time in future. Uh, basically, at that time, our clock just uh, uh, decrease the time uh, and just checks if the actual time is uh, the same of the first element of the list. And in case uh, this is true, it just call the function and remove the element from the list. Obviously, this design scales really poorly because uh, you need to disable interrupt or just to take a global lock on the list. And if you are in SMP system, you need something more scalable. So that uh, reason, um, uh, after a while, the structure has been changed to a uh, cool wheel. Will is a nash like data structure in which you have uh, mm, something like lots of buckets of unsorted lists on which the uh, outstanding timeouts are inserted. So um, every tick you just check one or more of these uh, 
buckets and if, if you see if some func some timeout uh, is expired and in case you call the function and just remove it uh, well in the original design that has been proposed uh, the callout uh, structures were uh, designed were uh, allocated by the subsystem itself but in FreeBSD, in order to don't deal within the subsystem with lifetime with life cycle problems, clients allocate this data structure. This is surely good because uh, you don't have to deal with this problem, but uh, this makes, uh, in some sense, the subsystem more fragile. So that uh, very good and scalable design because it's like an ash uh, data structure, so constant time for most of the operations. Uh, and uh, if the ash side is well, if the ash function is well designed, you will end up with having a, a short overflow list for every bucket in the array and uh, this surely will uh, give you some constant time to scan the list and so processing a tick and rearming a callout. So what are the issues in the current design? The data structure is highly type dependent. There are no possibility to handle high precision timers. Recently has been developed uh, timers hardware timers that uh, not only uh, have the uh, ability to interrupt periodically, but uh, can uh, interrupt with arbitrary granularity. So, uh, uh, for example, the HP-80 uh, uh, precision timer event jointly developed by Intel and uh, Microsoft, if I recall correctly. So, uh, no, um, with the design of the uh, backend data structure as it is, there is no possibility to handle timeouts that are less than two overheads and precision less than one overhead. If you consider that there are some clients in the kernel, uh, such as, for example, the use leap system call in which you specify the timeout in terms of microseconds. This may be, in some sense, uh, a limitation. Uh, in, uh, another example may be given by the gigabit internet connection in uh, which, uh, for example, uh, on TCP, if you have uh, to uh, start some recovery procedures because the package is lost. You, do, you are able to know this because there's a timeout. So if you uh, activate the recovery procedure soon, you will gain in terms of performances. Uh, another issue of the current design is that uh, all the callouts are running in software interrupt threads. This is for surely good for an uniformity point of view, but lead to higher power consumption, especially on symmetric multiprocessor systems. On the other hand, you may have that uh, uh, some subsystem may not need to uh, be interrupted uh, with uh, this higher granularity. So definitely a mechanism to def uh, define the precision you want to reach in your subsystem is needed. Well, some improvements has been done as part of the tickless kernel project by Alexander Motin. Uh, rather than calling hard clock CPU every tick, you just uh, defer uh, to call it if uh, your CPU is idle. Uh, well, the workflow is the following. Every time, in general, every time uh, the timer fires, you call our clock CPU, which in turn, uh, 
talk a loud stick which checks if there are some empty queues, some non-empty queues, uh, and uh, some work to do. This uh, can be avoided if your CPU is idle, and this has been done, and uh, it's good for power consumption. Even though some improvements have been introduced, a lot of work is still needing. As uh, I told, the possibility to not interrupt periodically, it's good. But uh, as it is, the structure doesn't allow to do this. So what was the main idea that has been proposed in past also mailing lists? Use a tree-based priority queue for the backend. A binary heap has proposed. A binary heap is nothing else than a tree-like data structure in which you maintain the following property. In every, for every node, for every element, there's associated um, a key. And uh, for the children uh, of a given node, the, the keys are uh, uh, greater or equal, or equal the key associated to that node. This is good because it uh, allows uh, system, uh, the subsystem to easily get to what is the next uh, event, the next call out that should be scheduled. And other uh, operating system obtain a good result using uh, such an alternative. Anyway, there are some questions that should be posed. Because, um, for example, in Solaris, the cyclic subsystem exploit this, but uh, uh, they uh, allow the allocation of the data structure for the callout within the backend. Uh, well, this is not possible in FreeBSD because it will cause a massive breakage. So this alternative uh, is not suitable for our purposes. Another alternative was to use an array of pointers to the uh, data structures. The issue is that uh, you need to reside the array at some point because you allocate them statically, then you need to double it or just resize it. This creates some problem because the malloc function, uh, in order to be reliable, should be called with the ham wait OK flag, and it can slip. But considering that uh, callout init, callout drain, and the other function related to callout data structure may be called under locks, this is not suitable because uh, you, may down some, you may do some work around, for example, trying to allocate in a... a no reliable fashion, and if it fails, then try to defer this allocation, but they are not really cleaner solution. Another possibility was to use a pointer-based uh, data structure, but in any case, this will lead to uh, not so good use of uh, the cache because uh, the elements of uh, the heap are not stored continuously. In order to maintain the, uh, in order to maintain these uh, high uh, resolution timers, we can use as uh, backend the event timer subsystem that uh, allows to specify arbitrary precision. Yes, as I told before, this design has some benefits, but uh, you have some subsystems such as the AHCE driver that has not uh, a really high number of callouts that are frequently rearmed. If you consider this and you map into the heap design, this will need to insert and lesion within the data structure. And this trivial solution has order of log n removal cost. Uh, with respect to the backend that was previously used that has constant time 
uh, for uh, processing and rearming a callout. So this solution cannot be considered. Recently, in these days, Dev Summit, we said, okay, let's maintain the goodwill and try to improve precision, trying to not measuring the uh, time in ticks, but uh, use get, uh, get, up, uh, get bin time in order to do time measurements. So uh, uh, maintaining the whole wheel data structure is surely better, but may have also some uh, drawbacks because you need to internally scan the data structure, to internally scan one list to see where is the next element that should be scheduled. Rather than in the heap, you just need to the root of the tree to see it. Another issue is that these changes could lead to break the uh, kernel programming interface and the kernel binary interface. It would be considered at some point to create a complete new kernel programming interface, but this is not uh, really good because we have a, in FreeBSD a stable API, so we try to avoid the as possible breakage. Right now, the struct callout is maintained in this fashion. Uh, if we switch to a bin up time approach, the bin up time as uh, is a 16 bytes long field. So uh, we have to replace uh, C time with the struct bin up time, and this will lead for sure a breakage in the binary interface. Uh, if we, at the end, will decide to use the heap for the data structure, probably that union may be used to maintain pointers to the children within the, uh, the heap. Yeah, another feature that is completely missing may be the support for direct execution of callout. Right now, within the callout tick aforementioned uh, function, you just schedule a software uh, interrupt thread that uh, um, is responsible to uh, that is responsible for the request. Uh, it should be nice to extend the API to uh, allow the user to specify if some trivial callout may just be run from under hardware interrupt context. Uh, for example, let's consider the following scenarios in which there's a thread that is sleeping. In order to wake up it, there's a small callout that is handled. As told before, a software interrupt thread is scheduled and this calls some wake up function. The scheduler now tries to run the woken thread on a different CPU, while the software interrupt just run will just be idle, idle in a moment. So this is not good because you surely incur in a context switch that can be avoided and you'll get up another CPU if it's idle. Yes. Yes, but uh, you are not using locking. So uh, this is the idea. Extend the API so that consumers may decide if it's safe to do this. Thank you. 
Just, just to finish. Okay. Just, just to finish. There's good to, as told before, extend the API to allow aggregation of events. Because uh, let's consider you need to schedule two callouts, which are distant one millisecond. And the first one is scheduled after one second, and the second one is scheduled after one second and one millisecond. In order to avoid to wake up the CPU too much, you may end up with uh, deciding to group these two events. So, every, this is all. Time is over. <laughs> I'd like to thank all the people that helped me during this project. Google that are finding me. FreeBSD Foundation that give me a travel grant to attend this conference. And Alexander Modin for mentoring me and all, all the people in the project. Thanks a lot for your time. If you have any question, Okay. <laughs>